And we're live. Okay, hello. Hello, internet. Flip for the win here on CP Brute, made uh, CP Brute A1, made by Skurly. Every time I hear Skurly, I think of Skurly Pipes. Uh, just gonna do a quick run through the map, uh, give some impressions on how I think I'd play in sixes, talk a little bit at sixes map design, uh, just throw out there what I think are probably some of the problems and what I think the map does well. So we're gonna start with last. Um, typically, most lasts are usually pretty hard to push into. Main reason for that is uh, existence of all classes, but also because you could hold over the doorways. Most of the time, uh, the way you, Sixes players fight last is it's not uncommon to have a two-man second to last, and generally you need to go off class pressure some way. This last in general, uh, first impression, the point is a very large space. If you compare this to any other last point, I'm pretty sure nothing comes to this scale. And one of the primary reasons why I think this might be a potential issue of concern is uh, you can't get eight stickies on it. It's very hard to sticky carpet this entire point. You only have two positions to watch over it, namely here and over there. So you only have two soldier standing positions. And then in terms of the routes you have to enter, uh, I was thinking how you would defend this. Let me clear my statues and I'll give you an idea. And then we can talk a little bit more about the finer details. So generally when you're looking in a last and you're trying to set up a defensive position, you have your demo man hold the hardest door to watch, which is probably this one. Also the most threatening door because it infiltrates the deepest. So I'm gonna put the demo there. It an easy rotation to the left. Uh, where would you put your soldiers? Generally on the opposite side, because you need splash class to be alternating. Uh, where, you know, you have a splash class there, you need a splash class on these doors over here. Pipe, very strong position, can spam into that doorway, assist the demo if there really, is really a need for it. Very hard to knock this guy off. Uh, he's very easy to just jump to safety, anything similar. And then probably another soldier anywhere over here. Hard to say, there or there. Just have vision on the doorway, can have vision to lobby, watch the cross here as well, give your demo a precursor. And then you generally have both your scouts on off classes. This is for even Ubers, by the way, um, in case that wasn't obvious. You have a long sniper cell in here, but for the most part, no one's picking the lower back. Uh, the thing I'm mainly concerned about is actually this spot right here. So if I stop levitating for a moment, you can see uh, if my dome man's not there, I'm gonna get him out of the way. Uh, if I have my sniper in this position, anywhere here, he can snipe down this hallway, he can snipe down that left route, and he has vision to the other door. So your sniper, in a very short rotation, has vision to all doors here, and he can cut off sights, more importantly, to any door he wants. So if he knows the combo's rotating that way, he can just sit here and he can't get splashed or pressured by anything else. If he knows the combo's coming main door, he can just rotate over and he can watch main without being pressured from any other doors. You know, combo's coming right here, you can just stand here or even further back, and it's not really too big of an issue, right? You can see this is kind of ridiculously far. So just in terms of holding positions, I think there are some a little bit of issue sight lines. I don't think this last is unplayable. That's really, really important to say. I think the last does have a good base to it, but it's a little bit ugly is probably what I'd say right now. Um, in terms of like six is polish, one of the things you should probably use to cut out all these back areas, there's like, I know this is like a detail thing, I, I think it's a detail thing probably, but <clears throat> there's no reason for it, all this empty space to exist. This room is kind of like really awkward, especially when you contrast it with some of the tight claustrophobic spaces. Same thing here, there's no reason for this door to really go out this far and wide with like nothing in this area or like no purpose to it. In terms of uh, having a full disadd on this last, you have your typical rotation behind the point. Typically what this means when you design this is that you have a combo holding one side, which I estimate would be over here. So your demo, your medic, and uh, your scout replacement, or scout, let's just say scout for now, but it's probably a heavy, um, are getting ready to, when the uber comes into them, regardless of what door, the enemy team is gonna try to go into your combo. Your combo backs out and rotates the other way. If they cut you off halfway, then you kind of rotate back and come out to the side ground. So basically you're just trying to play a little ring around the rosy. Um, I think this is quite a long rotation and because that choke is so stoppable, uh, it'll just make sense to have your combo come in here, push these players out and then have your demo easily trap that while all your soldiers, spy class, and scouts just spawn camp as high ground. Which is really the only ground that's sort of playable besides the high ground all the way back there. Um, <clears throat> so overall, I think it's a pretty hard last to hold. Uh, a little bit awkward to play, but it's nothing really too offensive about this. I would just say the scale of the point is probably a little bit too large. Um, and your doorways might be potentially really awkward to push out of. I think the only route you can really push as an attacker, I know I just said it's too easy to push, but the only route you can push an attacker is here, simply because the distance to the combo is way too far, but then how you convert that into anything, I'm not really sure, because you're gonna have a soldier on the high ground that you basically can't fight without a soldier jumping him, and the second the soldier splash this character, any anything can rotate over. Your sniper can rotate over, your demo can start spamming over, probably just from main. It seems very awkward to pressure, but not potentially difficult, but definitely awkward, is probably my summary for this point. Okay, in terms of your lobby, I always say the point of lobbies is to unify connecting routes into last. I also missed over one other thing. The potential of a lobby, and you see this a lot in Sultry, I think you have to clear the lobby to push out from your last a second. And it, the worse I think you kind of flow chart it, the more annoying it is for teams. Where if it takes your flank 12 years to clear the lobby, your combo is just going to be sitting there and it kind of slows the whole game down and makes things really awkward, especially when you have random back caps because you have so many corners to clear. I think your lobby is very awkward in terms of the 
corners and areas you have to like expect potentially expect players to be hanging overhanging doors i know this is visible kind of like villas but then this isn't visible right you can't see anyone over that door and you can see you basically have three doorways to clear which isn't uncommon but the problem is this entire lobby isn't unified in terms of you can have hiding spots inset into it <clears throat> So, I imagine this is to give the attackers options fighting into last, but I think it's probably going to be used by the defenders mostly being rats. So, there's a relatively difficult lobby to clear, and the space and scale of this lobby and the entrance into second, I think, actually make it very hard to counter stack out of your last. But I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, in terms of actual lobby design, I don't really have any too big of an issue with it. I think the biggest thing that's awkward is that your exit is cut off if you try to push this left side, and these packs require you to cross this, like, major sightline twice. It's very awkward to have a pack in a major sightline like this, I think. In Instead, they're generally clearly owned by one team or not, or clear in a middle ground conflict. So middle ground conflict would be something like, you know, in this room, like over there, where both teams kind of have to overextend to get it, where this pack is clearly meant to be defender sided, or sorry, attacker sided if you're pushing to last, but the way it's positioned having to cross these sightlines is way too awkward. Like imagine you eat a sticky or a pipe or something, and now you're like 10 health as a medic. Well, you can't grab that pack. That's insane. Yeah, there's no real point to grabbing this pack because it's small and puts you in the sightline. So you're just going to go out of lobby and probably grab like this pack over here. Like, oh my god, that rotation takes like 12 years. So I would probably try to think of maybe a little bit more sunshine-esque. Uh, it'd be fine to put the packs up front here, I think, or even against this wall, although you have a pack above it. And yeah, that's another thing that Pack being a high ground rotation means your medic probably wouldn't go all the way around here, right? This is just as awkward. So yeah, um, overall, I think you should streamline the lobby more by eliminating a lot of the hiding quarters. Uh, but I don't really have good advice as to how to do that. I just think you should have the mindset of, okay, I'm a single player, right? How do I make sure there's nobody in this lobby very cleanly and concisely? And even if you have two players on a flank, you know, they, they still have three doors to cover and there's a lot of ways players can get behind, especially like with this nonsense, right? Because this is so tight to mid, a player rolling out is going to have this. This is kind of like the Gully Watch big door, where you roll out from mid, you can take the big door, skip second, go to last. That's kind of this. You're skipping second, you're going to last, right? So there's always going to need to be someone watching this kind of cross. How does someone kind of like hold this door comfortably? Does he hold it here? Does he hold it here? If he's holding it up here, can he get beat into last? <clears throat> All considerations kind of have in mind. Not really offensive lobby, just awkward as well. That's the way I describe lobby and last, awkward. Okay, so moving on to second. The primary thing I would like to talk about is uh, what your holding potential looks like. One of the primary problems with Villa, the reason why I think people didn't like Villa, is because the way you held the choke was basically you couldn't hold the choke. There was a, basically a pit where neither team could cross it. You can't hold the, the choke door close, uh, so you have to give distance from it, but that means the attacking team has this giant pit to cross, which is very awkward to cross. So, in terms of holdability, what I would expect is you probably have your demo playing around here. It's kind of hard to say where he holds precisely. I would think he could just spam from behind this barricade, potentially spam from up here. I even think some demos could just very easily roller jump up here and just spam like that. Now, in terms of scout positions, there's not really a reason to not have your scouts on high ground here, uh, just kind of something like this. You're mainly looking for a sack or choke. Um, this is largely unsackable because you'll just have a soldier here he can play passive, he can play aggressive, he can spot this entire thing. The second there's any threat, your medic will be pretty safe, he'll be able to rotate. I think medic plays, it's a little hard to say, he either plays back here, this is probably more of a disadvantage position, or he plays on point, kind of forward here, or even over here. I think if over here, you definitely need to have a player either stuffing this, or back here, ready to deal with the cross. I think your flank scout goes to deal with anyone if you have any behind plays. For the most part, I don't think a behind play is good here, because it's very hard to come to this door, even if someone's damaged and you get behind. There's that pack there that usually someone close to shutter will beat you to even if you jump on this high ground like as a scout it's obviously a double jump as a soldier you have to rocket jump up there and they're closer to their combo they'll probably be better buffed to take this fight so a little bit awkward but you know uh, it's always a possibility generally you only have these options to go behind when um, the map is uh, very choky and it's difficult to get a sack otherwise on your map in particular uh sorry on brute in particular I'm um, trying to just a general audience, not just the map, I guess. Um, I think it won't be very hard to just drive right through the main. So I'm going to erase all of my statues. Uh, this is such a huge door. The only door I can think of that's similar to this is on Reckoner Last, where it's actually so wide that um, and it's not high bomb like this that people just send demo sacks through it. Um, so what I would predict is you're probably just going to have your combo just kind of like linger around here. And have like probably a soldier there and then like maybe some flank play or even they're just here as well and they're just going to push through this main door because you can't walk out this door are you kidding me it's huge right soldier jumps through gets space your demo walks through he gets some damage if he doesn't get some damage he just backs off 
So yeah, I think this door is way too wide. It doesn't even fit the definition of a choke. It's just hugely way too large and it's gonna make it way too easy to dry push. As a demo here, I basically just spam them as soon as they're off high ground, like uh, I, I win this point. So very kind of easy to dry push makes you worried that it'll be too hard to hold. Um, in terms of the other routes you have, um, I think this window, I'm not gonna call it degenerate, but I do think it's very difficult for the defensive team to do anything about this. Like this is a very easy one rocket jump uh, and as soon as any player is knocked off high ground, but you also can't maintain high ground because it's so easy for the demo to spam them. Like this is uncharged sticky distance. So in my opinion, feels a little tight, but you know, uh, it's always hard to judge a map off scale when um, you know it's just a single person running around. Uh, this flank is a little bit long. I don't really like how far it goes. It's probably the way I'd put it. Um, it's just, it, it infiltrates very deeply uh, without vision for a pretty long time, but your your cross is sighted. So there's no real point for it being that long uh, because some player is going to call it and then there's a chance to get stuffs. So the route doesn't really make much sense to me. It's a route that's obviously made so that <clears throat> we're going to talk about Six's design. Um, generally, the way Six's players think about maps, I always say it's uh, 2.5 choke. I like saying 2.5 choke, but theoretically it's 3 choke. Yeah, You have 3 main chokes, and when it comes to pushing, if you have Uber, uh, or, or whether you don't have Uber, the way it generally works is you have a door you always want to use through, generally to catch the medic and kill them or get good classes, right? You have a door that you usually always want to not use through. So you kind of like try to milk, try to preserve your advantage, try to take it, and then use your advantage on the next point. And then you generally have a question mark door. And I call the question mark door the decision that separates the good teams from the great teams. The door where you could use through it, but you could also try to not use through it. And you have to kind of read the decision and make a decision. Uh, on the spot. So in terms of disad, right, my team doesn't have Uber. Where does my medic play? You would estimate back here, right? This is pretty far back. If you use your choke, if you say there, you're fine. But the problem is the cutoff. A few maps have a cutoff. Gully Wash has a cutoff, but it gets away with it because there's elevation difference. The problem with your cutoff is even if I'm here as a medic, right, and I hear that they're cutting us off and I go back, if you look at this corner, they're going to meet me in lobby because I have to go out and then in and then out again. And the in part is very important there because if they're hiding around this corner, I know they have Uber and they know where my medic is. So <clears throat> soldier just spots, you know, their combo's playing super far back. You can see through this, right? I'm going to talk about that later. I don't like free vision, but it, I can see that mag statue there. So when your flank player calls it, your combo's like here. Your combo says just use. You use on a scout here. He drops down and he's catching your medic before he's leaving lobby. That to me is really scary because what that means is now on this ad, this medic has to play even further freaking back. But probably like all the way back here, ready to leave like, oh God, he can't leave that way either, right? So he has to play like back here. This is way too far to have any sort of pressure on the point when you're on disad so it's something you have to consider where you expect your disad hole to be where you expect your even hole to be and that's the two things you should have for every single point if not an idea kind of idea in mind and then when you think about doors think is this a door i want to use through this is a door i want to milk through and then is this anything in between dry push door probably anything in between only because there can be soldier high bombs you don't know if left or right is clear other door you know your back is clear it's probably you want to milk through which is not really incentivized because you kind of have a ceiling above you, a high choke, and any of this is stickyable. So kind of sending mis mixed messages on what your doors want to be compared to what the route is. And you can see outer circle, no potential to catch because the players will be far in. Inner circle, huge potential to catch. Good thing to keep in mind. Your inner circle is also part of your rollout uh, because you have, um, what do you call this, an L-shaped kind of like bend, and that's mirrored. Okay, anything else I want to talk about second on? Overall, my impression of second is that it's a little bit tight. I think it's probably too messy, and I was going to talk about this revision, but... Oh, right, the last thing. Um, I want to talk about the purpose of shutters. So, whenever you have shutters, they're, the, the base level, I think, boring perspective is that they exist to block a sightline, which is true here. I think it blocks some sightlines, you know, being annoying there, being annoying there. Um, but for the most part, um, whenever you have a shutter... I think of it as glue. What it means is this should be a really hard door to push out because whenever you push through a shutter, think about it, I have to get this close to open the shutter. I am forced to stand in this position. Meanwhile, they can have players anywhere they want looking downward and knowing that the shutter exists. You can't clear the traps on the other side of the door until the shutter is open, right? And these four players all have vision of the shutter while you're one player looking outward and they know you're there the second you open the door and you're in a choke door. So for the most part, it goes the other way as well, right? Uh, where I could have players here sticking the shutter, right? Uh, and on Sunshine, that's definitely the case. You, you can't clear the shutter very easily. You approach the lobby from a different direction because you can't clear the shutter very well. Um, but for the most part, your lobby doesn't really have that because I can't really watch the shutter from any of this low ground or pressure as well. So you have basically a one-way shutter, shutter that only benefits the people on second to block the people pushing out of last. And it's on a door that I feel like is not very intuitive. Like, why, why is it on this door instead of the lower door in terms of, like, base geometry? Because it's generally, you know, it's a wide door which this one is tighter than the other one. It's a wide door that 
is compensated for the fact by it, that it for the fact that it is a shutter. So this is a little bit of unusual design. I'm not sure I really get it. Um, in terms of this, um, this is going to be... Uh, it, it's a little bit in conflict, right? I think when you're starting out a map and you want people to play it and you want people to learn it, you should use glass. And that's purely because... Or, or not glass, but, you know, like, uh, you should give friendly vision, basically. More vision than you think you need. And the primary reason for that is when people don't fucking know your map, they're going to, like, walk into corners and get stuck and have no idea where they're going, right? But the second you add glass, people are like, okay, that's the way I rotate. Okay, I see where the choke is, that kind of thing. And it's good, right? But it's bad the higher level you go because it removes aspects of teamwork, yeah? Like, normally, if I'm a scout here, I have to call for my medic. I say, oh, there's soldiers close choke. I think he's going to go for a bomb, right? But if I'm a medic here, I can see that. There's no need for teamwork. I can see everything myself. And that's one of the things I learned from uh, Highlander gameplay that I really, really underestimated. That when you um, add vision, you potentially remove teamwork. So it's something you have to be very cautious about. Okay, so I want to move on and talk about this because this is really uncommon. So I talked about last. Generally, the purpose of last lobby, as I mentioned, is to connect your routes. It is very, very rare to have a lobby pushing into second. The only map I can think of that does it is um, for, from mid to second. The only map that I can think of that does it discreetly is Metalworks, and even that has a disconnected route. Um, so I think it's very weird to have this lobby kind of inter interconnect your routes into second. I don't really think it's offensive. I just think that it will make things very difficult for uh, the team from second sacking into mid. Because if you look at, <coughs> I'm just gonna go real quick over the holding positions, right? What are your options to fight into this player on high ground, right? I can see your player crossing to the left, right? So it's very easy to just have probably a demo down there locking that door. Any scout on high ground, I like, oh my God, think how oppressive this is. You don't get vision there, you're gonna get vision there. And it can play pretty far back here. You can have a soldier easily splash that. You could even be on the other balcony, you can even be on the point, right? So for the most part, I do not see any way for how you manage to fight into mid here from the lobby. And because the lobby is so wide here, um, I question if there is feasibility for a forward hold because there's the back route potential here. So you can't really hold this for a long period of time because you're always risking getting fight by a, a route you don't have vision on. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this transitional space is not very well handled. If I were you, I would have more discrete routes. So when I said it's very uncommon to have a lobby, if you think of Metalworks, there is a lobby, but there's also another route that's separated from lobby. So just to clarify, the reason you have a lobby pushing last is because it needs to be easy to push out. Otherwise, it's really difficult to push out of last, right? But in terms of this second one, you want to have discrete flanks. Because if you don't have discrete flanks, then it's very easy to stuff everything because everything's connected to each other. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So right now, there's no reason for your combo to not be here because I can rotate every route from here where normally on seconds you have your combo rotate flank, push this way, push that way. So on Sunshine, you would push Cafe, you'd push Valley, and then you press your choke again, push Cafe. You have fake outs that way. On this map, just because of the way the lobby works, I don't think your combo really needs to do much rotation. You can kind of pressure every door at the same time, which is annoying. It's more of a last gameplay than second gameplay. So yeah, that's probably how I'd separate that. Um, moving on, uh, where are we? I guess it's time to talk about mid fights. So, um, one of the things that uh, I picked up from talking with someone else about this map is they said the mid has no objective. And I thought that was a really interesting way of putting it that I kind of agree with. The problem with your mid right now is that there isn't actually any high ground to fight over. So if you imagine Metalworks mid, right? One of the things I always teach about Metalworks mid is if you establish, if you manage to strengthen, like solidify and have your demo on the point for a period of five seconds, you've won Metalworks mid because from the mid, he can walk everything out. But if I imagine, if I just teleported my demo onto this midpoint, right? Like right here, what can he do? He, if he spams lower, that's fine, but if they rotate to the right, he can't come down this ramp and fight them, right? They can just keep bringing around the rosing him. If he's over here and he spams that high ground, they rotate left, he also can't really chase them. It's just incredibly awkward, yeah? In terms of high ground soldiers can play, basically, um, oh, I, I didn't even talk about that rollout, but what I experienced based off my, you know, amateur jumping skills, I would expect the demo to roll out over there. I expect both combos uh, to roll out essentially out this tiny doorway here. And then I would expect one soldier to go here. And then if you're playing for a media bomb, your soldier probably go to the far side. Otherwise, if you're playing slow, there's no reason for your soldier not to come out this door and get a better buff or just come out this door and just play spam. For the most part, I think this is incredibly soldier unfriendly mid. You don't have any real ground for your soldiers to land on. And some of the high bombs are even um, disabled by 45 degree angles like this. Okay, I really expected to be able to high bomb here. I think maybe that would pressure the scout who could probably be on that high ground. But in the end, it ends 
ends up not working out very well. So for the most part, the way I expect this mid to play is that you will have a scout here, your medical play somewhere here, your demo might try to walk up main here, pressure the opposite side, so he's like somewhere rotating in this area, kind of depends. You probably have one soldier here, just kind of like passive, there's really nothing you can do. Maybe you could join the scout up here if he really wants to and spam across, right? But for the most part, it's scout high ground, not soldier high ground. And then your other soldier wouldn't really want to play separated anyway. Um, Mids and sixes are separated into two variants. There's rotational mids, like Fossus and Sunshine, and I just call them straightforward mids, uh, where you have one team play aggressive and one team play passive, um, like uh, Snake Water, yeah? And that's just basically one team does damage, and then there's no such thing as a true passive mid. Being passive just means trying to develop an advantage before you commit, right? So it's passive into aggression. Uh, the problem with your mid is that I think there's basically no incentive to go in. There's too much distance to cross, <coughs> for starters, in terms of, not, not in terms of scale, but in terms of if I bomb as a soldier, there's no way for a scout to really follow up on the damage, like, over there, yeah? And your demo as well. So for the most part, I think both teams are incentivized to just sit really far back and spam at each other, but they can't even spam at each other well because there's too much junk in the way, right? And stuff like this blocks the high bomb as well, so it's a little bit awkward. So for the most part, I think the way the mid is going to play is both teams are going to sit really far away from each other and spam, and then maybe someone gets lucky, and then they just kind of pressure up. Uh, the point itself, I think it needs to be more exposed and in that way be a little bit better as an objective ground to take. What I might recommend doing is deleting these kind of steel walls on the side, keep but keeping the pipes. So there is a prop to play around, uh, but for the most part, from this high ground, as a demo man, as a soldier, you can spam downward on stuff. And then as a scout, you're kind of incentivized to sit up. And at that point, you basically made ulti duo, where the medic is basically just hiding around the point like this, and you just have everyone play literally the single objective. I think they're probably, if, if I had free control, free reign over what I'd switch, and I could just flick a switch, I would consider adding more soldier ground onto the mid. Because stuff like this is very fine scout ground, and it's also fine for soldier spam ground. But soldier, if you think of Villa, Villa is a perfect example of this. You need ground that a soldier can land on that a scout is not necessarily good at taking. Yeah? Or the scout is sitting there, he's playing too passive. If the soldier lands there, he's like a big threat to a scout. So, soldier only ground. Doesn't mean only accessible by soldier. Like, I can stand here as a scout, right? But ground that a soldier can high bomb land on and then threaten something would be would be super, super helpful. I don't think the point counts as that because it's going to be spam central hell if you expose it. Um, but yeah, let me think if there's anything else. Uh, let me just go through, maybe summarize my thoughts and everything if that helps. I think glass overall isn't unplayable, but it is very disorganized. It's There's a lot of potential problems. So potentially problematic glass, but not unplayable. I think second is the scale is too small and potentially unholdable. I think it'll be too difficult to hold because your choke door is may, why, may, uh, way too massive, is probably the way I'd put it. I think the connector space is probably what I call the biggest problem on the map right now. The fact that there's no discrete flank to second, that this is the connector lobby. You could call it a problem, you could call it a unique feature. I think it is weird. And then I think the mid is not very functional. I think for the most part, there's no objective, really, so to speak. So there's no real clear way to play the mid in an attractive way. All right, that's all my thoughts on this map. Uh, hope you enjoyed.